كانت المعرفة ولا تزال دوما هي القاطرة التي تقود الأمم نحو بناء حضاراتها الخالدة وأمجادها التالدة فتقدم الدول لا شك مرهون بتأمين حصول قدر وافر من التعليم النافع المشفوع بالتأهيل اللازم والخبرة الموروثة التي تضمن التنمية المستدامة واليوم تعيش أمتنا عصرا يشهد تطورا سريعا في جميع مناحي الحياة بفعل مجموعة من العوامل والقوى المؤثرة في مجال العولمة والثورة الرقمية وبلادنا الجزائر في حاجة ماسة لمواكبة سير التقدم في مختلف المجالات بغية بناء مستقبل مزدهر لأبنائها والأجيال المستقبلية وفي ظل الأزمات وصعوبة الظروف المعيشية تتصابق الدول لاستقطاب الخبرات العلمية والأيدي العاملة الماهرة المدربة فلقد بلغت عدد الكفاءات الجزائرية خارج الوطن أكثر من أربعمائة ألف كفاءة في مختلف التخصصات منهم المهندسون والأطباء ومنهم الباحثون في أرقى المؤسسات العالمية واليوم تعمل فئة من هذه النخبة العلمية في منظمة إيناس بالتعاول مع كل الكفاءات الوطنية لترقية البحث العلمي بالجزائر والنهوض بالبلاد للمساهمة في التأسيس لاقتصاد مبني على المعرفة وإناس هي منظمة علمية غير ربحية هدفها نشر العلم والمعرفة والنهوض بالجزائر من خلال مشاريع تخدم البلاد في مجالات شتى كالتعليم عن بعد والصحة وحماية البيئة وتكنولوجيات التسيير الإلكتروني والطيران ومجالات علمية أخرى غايتنا هي ازدهار وطننا والارتقاء به إلى ساحة الدول المتطورة بإنشاء جهد علمي تتضافر فيه الجهود وتجتمع فيه الكفاءات ويبنى عليه التغيير الذي يحلم به كل الجزائريين تأسست إيناس في عام 2016 بمساهمة مجموعة من الخبراء الجزائريين الطموحين وهي تضم اليوم أكثر من 500 عضو وتحتاج لدعمكم لمواصلة مجهوداتها فلا يخفى لأحد أن المشاريع العلمية ذات نظرة بعيدة المدى تحتاج لإمكانيات كثيرة ولذلك ندعوكم لدعم مبادراتنا بالتبرع في سبيل الله اقتداء بما أمرنا الله عز وجل في باب التعاون على البر والتقوى قال الله تعالى في سورة المائدة وتعاونوا على البر والتقوى ولا تعاونوا على الإثم والعدوان وقال تعالى في سورة البقرة الذين ينفقون أموالهم بالليل والنهار سرا وعلانية فلهم أجرهم عند ربهم ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون The International Network of Algerian Scientists, INAS, is a non-profit organization founded in 2016 by Algerian academics and professionals residing in the USA. The motivation is to pay back the homeland and help elevate the level of education in Algeria. INAS's mission is to network Algerian competencies worldwide with counterparts in Algeria. Among its activities, INAS has organized a significant conference that took place outside of Washington, D.C., USA in 2019. The conferees identified several need areas in Algeria and agreed to work on 10 different projects covering areas ranging from education, healthcare, to agriculture, and ecotourism, to name a few. The work is ongoing and progressing. INAS is adopting the most contemporary and proven scientific methods to address these issues. Ines's humble beginnings included a few members. Today, it accounts for hundreds of able Algerians from the world over. Their goal is to participate in the rebuilding process of our new Algeria. These able and proud Algerians combine diversity and expertise with benevolence to set a path for a bright future in Algeria. Ines uses a top technology platform to allow members to collaborate and exchange knowledge. As an organization, INES has different departments that ensure professional support to all its members, projects, and events. We welcome all Algerian competencies worldwide to join us in our noble mission. Algeria is bigger than all of us. Let's stand up and be counted today. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. 
مرحبا بكم جميعا مشاهدينا الكرام في هذا البث المباشر عبر الفيسبوك واليوتيوب اليوم هو موعد الندوة الثانية من سلسلة الندوات الخاصة بالفيزياء الطبية بالتعاون مع الشبكة الدولية للعلماء الجزائريين إناس ستكون ندوتنا عبر الويب حول التصوير بالأشعة الصينية لدراسات سرطان الثدي من تقديم الأستاذ الدكتور عباس شداد الدكتور عباس شداد هو أستاذ مشارك في علوم الكمبيوتر ورئيس مجموعة مشروع البيانات الضخمة بقسم علوم الحاسوب بمعهد بالكينجا للتكنولوجيا بكارل سكرونا بالسويد حصل الأستاذ على الدكتوراه في كلية من كلية الحاسوب والهندسة بجامعة أولسرا في في إيرلندا الشمالية بالمملكة المتحدة كذلك عمل في مرحلة ما بعد الدكتوراه في جامعة أوميو بالسويد وكان أيضا منتسبا إلى معهد كارلو لينسكا في ستوكهولم لعدة سنوات منذ اكتوبر 2015 التحق بمعهد بلكينجا للتكنولوجيا في كارل سكرونا بالسويد كمحاضر اول بقسم علوم وهندسه الحاسب الالي حيث يعمل الان كاستاذ مشارك. So, السلام عليكم ويلكم تو اول اور دير فيور تو ذيس لايف برودكاست اون فيسبوك اند يوتيوب. Today we are starting our second webinar series of medical physics which is the second co co which is in the cooperation with the the International Network of Algerian Scientists. Uh, our second webinar will be on the X-ray imaging for study on breast cancer. Uh, our speaker is Dr. Abbas Shaddad. Uh, he is Associate Professor in Computer Science, Group Leader of Big Data Project uh, at the Department of Computer Science, uh, Bill King Institute of Technology, Karso Krona Suite. Uh, he, uh, he did uh, his PhD at the Faculty of Computing and Engineering at the University of Elstra, uh, Ulster in Northern Ireland uh, at UK. Uh, also, he worked at, uh, as a postdoc at uh, EMEA University in uh, Sweden and also uh, was affiliated with uh, the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm for several years. Uh, from October 2015, He joined the Belking Institute of Technology in Carlo Scrona uh, as a senior lecturer, Department of Computer uh, Science and Engineering, where he holds uh, currently the title of associate professor uh, or docent. So uh, you are welcome, Dr. Abbas, and you have the talk now. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Abdelhai. And uh, first of all, I mean, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Um, This is Abbas Shaddad, um, and um, before I start, um, before I start uh, the talk today, I would like just to um, uh, thank uh, Inas, Shabak Al Alimi Al Ulama Al Jazeerin, for uh, their kind uh, invitation um, and for supporting um, <coughs> this collaboration with. Uh, or linking uh, 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 Algerian scientists abroad back to their uh, country, which is very good uh, initiative. Um, yeah, and I hope uh, all the best uh, to the association. Um, yeah, so today's talk um, is about uh, the X-ray imaging for studies on uh, breast cancer. Let me first uh, stress out that uh, I'm not a physician and I am not a physicist. Uh, I am a computer scientist, uh, but I had uh, the opportunity to, um, to collaborate and work together with uh, top world scientists uh, to, uh, in, in medical field, uh, epidemiologists and uh, statisticians and physicists. And uh, By this talk, I would like, would like just I mean, to bring my experience I mean, to, to the view and uh, to share uh, uh, the back, uh, I mean, the, the experience that I uh, had back then at Karolinska Institute. Okay, uh, this is my contacts. And since uh, the video is uh, recorded, therefore, I mean, If you want to contact me later on, I mean, you don't need to write this down. I mean, you can just view the video later on. It will be uploaded, I think, to YouTube. And uh, you have all my contacts here if you want to contact me regarding 
any like collaboration or um, yeah, any questions about that. Um, this is my website here, uh, here. Uh, so that I mean, if you want to get a glimpse uh, around my um, research uh, topics, uh, feel free to uh, just uh, browse through. Okay, so I have this slide, and I would like I mean, just to stop for a while here. Uh, this is uh, my uh, teacher, uh, my physics teacher back in uh, secondary school. Hello, Ustadi Aniful Igulu Tahar Gerzu. Ustad Min Khairat Abna Al Jalfa. Warahil Al Anna Yanifi. يعني في صمت منذ أسابيع قليلة إن شاء الله نترحم عليه ربي يرحمه إن شاء الله يوسع عليه and this will be as I mentioned here it's a dedication to my uh, to my physics uh, teacher back then in the secondary school he passed away a few weeks uh, ago so may Allah bless his soul إن شاء الله all right, um, so a little bit about myself. I'm uh, now residing where I am sitting right now. I'm sitting at this place here called uh, Karlskrona. It's in the southern part of Sweden. And uh, I am working here at uh, Blekinge Institute of Technology. The campus has uh, two uh, different locations, one at a different city called uh, Kalsham. And this is uh, the, the building of the campus there. And uh, the main campus is this one here. My office should be right here, where I am sitting and talking to you now. And um, of course, of course, like uh, in Sweden here, like when we want to show the campus, we show it like in spring when everything is green, because in the winter, everything is like white. Um, so this is uh, the main campus, basically. And uh, I am here uh, beside my teaching and the supervision of, um, of master students. Uh, I, uh, I am leading a group. Uh, here uh, composed of lecturer and uh, PhD students uh, on big data analytics for image processing. And uh, we do constantly like uh, uh, work together with uh, companies. So we have these industrial projects to make the, the research applied, not just, just theoretical. And uh, we are uh, like working together with these uh, three main companies. Uh, Archive Digital is a Swedish uh, company. Uh, it, um, its main business is to um, digitize historical documents. So we are working on kind of OCR, optical character recognition, and uh, yeah, and word spotting and that kind of uh, 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 topics. We are also like working uh, with uh, Sony Mobile uh, here in Sweden. And also uh, with the JK and Aerospace, uh, which um, manufactures um, uh, aeroplane uh, engines. Okay, um, this is a, a slide that I normally bring uh, together with my, uh, like me, whenever I go uh, giving uh, like a talk, because it really summarizes. Uh, the beauty of image analysis and the beauty of image processing in uh, at the macro level. And um, although I am working at different uh, areas here, uh, but uh, today's talk will, will mainly uh, uh, cover kind of this uh, sub areas. Um, yeah, I did work back then, I mean, on light microscopy or like optical projection tomography and uh, the intention was uh, here, I mean, to, at the beginning, I mean, for this talk, I mean, to cover this area and this area. So therefore, I mean, at the beginning, we had this uh, two topics, 
um, but um, later on we just uh, summarize it. I mean, or like restrict it to this uh, area alone. So we'll talk about uh, X-ray imaging in the medical field. So it's in the radiology basically. So uh, this is a kind of a question that I bounce back to you. Um, have you ever like contemplated them, the use of X-rays uh, in mammography screening? Did it like cross your mind? Um, because no nowadays, I mean, we, I mean, we we know about this technology, but um, some probably don't know what's the use of it uh, in uh, mammography or breast uh, uh, screening. Um, the use of it is like. It will come here, but uh, the use of it is like based on the necessity that we are having kind of uh, like a chronic disease uh, striking women worldwide. So in here I have this statistic, it's half like million death of breast cancer in the world each year. And this is a really uh, like a good uh, motivation to to work uh, around this uh, uh, topical uh, research. Uh, so why we uh, do that? We do that, I mean, to detect uh, abnormal uh, physiological changes or signs of tumor uh, in er earlier, like information that uh, could probably save lives. And this is what we call here risk prediction. We are not here, uh, like uh, this talk is not like about detecting tumor per se. It's about risk prediction. So we uh, like have like a model that it uh, follows women and it categorizes them. I uh, will talk about that uh, later on in more detail. And um, how we do that, we do that by examining the, the, the X-ray uh, images of the breast and doing some uh, post analysis of that. And this uh, three here, uh, the question here and this uh, answer here, uh, this um, correspond to the uh, what, why and how. Uh, we do the, the, the X-ray uh, uh, mammography uh, for women. So hopefully this answers that. And by saying that, I mean, I will just go through now the outline. I divide it into uh, these three uh, kind of uh, three uh, categories. First of all, I will just give like a brief uh, insight into the X-ray technology. I know that uh, among the audience here, uh, there are many uh, who are like, uh, don't have this background uh, in, in the physics. So I have to balance that. Um, and then I will talk about uh, the breast cancer studies that uh, are tackled uh, using uh, X-ray imaging. Finally, I will uh, uh, show you like uh, the software that we have and it's a free uh, uh, software that is uh, available for public, and uh, also some data set and open machine learning challenges that one uh, could uh, uh, take uh, with him, I mean, for, for further studies. And they are all like online, and I will show you like the links later on. Then I will show you the references for your need later on. Yeah, so the, the first X-ray or the first, um, photographic uh, kind of the first photographic image that it has uh, been like known worldwide is the the x-ray uh, image from uh, this uh, german mechanical engineer called uh, william rottingen and uh, rottingen he's uh, the guy who invented the x-ray in the 80s, uh, in the 19th century, so 1895, uh, towards the end of 1895, November, December, in that uh, period. And uh, the first thing, I mean, he uh, he uh, 
visualized or he imagined the, the, the hand of his wife, Berta de Colher. And uh, later on, by five years, uh, he was awarded the first Nobel Prize in uh, physics. Okay, and um, you can see here, I mean, it's not, I mean, with our current technology, this one, it's nothing. I mean, it's not a good quality uh, image. It's not good quality X-ray, but at that time, it was really something out of the blue. It's like something coming um, from other space or something like that. I, I, I don't know, I mean, what was the reaction of his wife to see her uh, skeleton, but uh, nobody talked about that, I think. Yeah, so the X-ray, uh, if we take like a cross-section um, of the X-ray uh, tube, this is basically, I mean, the X-ray uh, device, and uh, it has a chamber here. The first of all, it has a casing and a chamber here filled with oil. And the oil here, as I mentioned, I think here, yeah, it's for uh, isolation and uh, to to make it as a shield. I mean, for the to not um, uh, like to to not um, to, to, to block the, the X-ray radiation from going outside. Um, and also it's like for insulation and uh, cooling. Um, it has this, uh, the main things are like the, the, the cathode and the, the anode here. Uh, so the first thing I mean that the, the, there will be like a high voltage uh, beam uh, Sent like from the cathode here towards the towards the um, the end tip here of the anode, and uh, then the X-ray will uh, will be generated here and go through a small tiny window here to the to the patient or the organ that we want uh, to to examine. So this is a window, and underneath it should be like a the the specimen or the sample that we want uh, to uh, to to visualize. Um, okay. Um, as, as when we zoom in into this area here, we'll find that the cathode here. It's uh, it's as I said. I mean, it 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 sends this uh, high voltage um, uh, negative charge towards the anode which is like the, the positive charge. So the, the electrons here will be um, will be targeting, will be attracted, I mean, to, to, to the anode uh, in this area here. And once they hit uh, the anode here, they, they, um, they generate uh, what we call the X-ray uh, photons, okay? And this one here, they will go through the window, the one that I am showing here. Okay, in here there is like an arrow here that it shows that uh, this anode is rotating continuously and that's to uh, avoid uh, uh, heat because I mean, uh, after some time when the, these electrons are heating the, the anode, I mean, then this spot here will start I mean, to heat up very uh, swiftly and therefore, I mean, it will uh, uh, make a damage to the, the anode. Therefore, I mean, a way to for cooling here is to rotate it, to give it like an ample time to cool down. Um, and the rotation is done through this motor, which is like, um, um, yeah, yeah, it's done I mean, using like in, induction um, here, because in here you have some magnets uh, to also to, to make the vibration, I mean, the lowest possible. And uh, here, like once the X-rays are generated, they go through this tiny window. And this tiny window here, it's sometimes, uh, it's, uh, or most of the time, it's uh, uh, created using um, uh, aluminum. So it filters out uh, small or low energy uh, X-ray photons because uh, it it will allow just like the 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 high energy photons 
or like X-ray photons to pass through to the sample to visualize. Yeah, and uh, for the small ones, uh, not small, for the low energy photons, they will be blocked right here to avoid uh, uh, high dosage or high radiation for the, for the patient. When it comes to the result or the output of the of the X-ray uh, uh, technology itself, it manifests itself in different uh, mod models or different. It's embedded at, in different uh, devices. So this is uh, one of them. Is the radiology here for the chest uh, X-ray? You have the fluoroscopy. You have the mammography. Uh, and you have the computed tomography. The one that I have here uh, with the box, red box here, is the one that we will focus on uh, for this talk. Uh, the X-ray uh, for mammography is this, um, it, it's, it's acquired, uh, the acquisition is done using these devices. Uh, this is an analog, an example of an analog, analog mammography scanner. This is like used back then. It's uh, the the model model is uh, halogic, I think. And um, I think in Algeria, many of the, the health centers, I mean, they uh, they are still using the the analog uh, mammography or mammograms. But recently, I mean, since um, since. 2003 in Europe, uh, what we call here the FFDM, which stands for the Full Field uh, Digital Mammography, came to the market, and um, and only in 2006. And so that means three years after uh, it came to Europe, uh, Swedish hospitals adopted uh, the FFDM uh, uh, mammograms or mammography. Uh, so in here, there are like some examples of that, the GE General Electric and the Philips and the Sectra. The Sectra here is a Swedish company uh, based in a city here uh, north of my city called uh, uh, Lin Shopping. Um, but it has office uh, worldwide. Um, this, uh, uh, the Philips here, it's a mammog uh, mammography uh, imaging scanner but uh, Philips is like intensively working on uh, advancing the technology. So uh, a few years back, I mean, they introduced what they call it uh, tomosynthesis, then synthesis, yeah, uh, which basically is uh, is uh, is this, uh, like six degrees uh, accusation platform. So. Instead of uh, acqu acquiring uh, the the images, the mammograms from like uh, uh, like just two views, like uh, the MLO view and the CC view, so instead of that, it acquires like uh, the, the 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 mammograms from all the images uh, from six different angles. This, of course, will help in uh, later on for three D reconstruction of the breast. Um, because yeah, the objects not in normal in the real world are 3D basically. Um, so it helps in uh, doing that, but at the same time, it exposes women to uh, to more radiation. And therefore, I mean, the tomosynthesis uh, initiative, it didn't like uh, find its way that much. I mean, uh, to the hospitals, it's not really adopted that much because of its possible harm to women with uh, high radiation. Yeah, and uh, now I will talk a little bit about uh, the old version of the, the mammogram scan or the X-ray scanners, uh, which is the, the film-based uh, mammogram uh, device, the one that we uh, is shown here. And uh, here you have this uh, platform or the plate here. And inside it here, you have, will have a cassette. Cassette is basically a co co um, composed of the, this uh, film that we are used to. 
So when you go to do like a scan, uh, like at the radiology uh, department, then you will get uh, something like this, whether it's like for the breast or for the chest or for the whole body, you'll find it like in this form, like with a uh, floppy uh, piece of uh, plastic. And um, that's inserted into, into this uh, the cassette here. And this one here, it's composed of uh, these different layers. Um, and uh, this um, kind of plate here is used to compress the breast because if the image directly like that, I mean, you will uh, lose the th three, third dimension of, uh, of, uh, of the tissue. Therefore, I mean, they compress the breast so that the, the fibroganodera tissue or like the fatty tissue, it spreads out, therefore, you will have like a better view of it than uh, without uh, uh, compression. And uh, once, I mean, the, the breast uh, is uh, X-rayed using the film here, what uh, they normally do back then is to take it and to insert it into this, um, this uh, device. Uh, and this device here, it, uh, it has, uh, uh, a laser uh, beam generator here that releases the energy from uh, from this uh, film and therefore it digitizes it so it turns it from analog to digital then you will find it uh, here like on the screen of the computer and the doctors here they or the radiologists i mean can uh, examine the uh, the breast um, uh, on on the screen Yeah, uh, this is for the film uh, or the analog uh, X-ray uh, images. Now we'll move on to the to the FFDM or the full field digital mammograms. Uh, I will show you like an example of all of them. This is like an example of the digitized uh, screen film. I say uh, digitized to not the screen film because the screen film is this one and once i mean we put it into this machine and generates the digitized one and uh, usually it comes with a, a, a tag here for the patient uh, information patient name or patient id it's printed out on the on the film therefore it will appear in the digitized uh, form uh, in the recent uh, era here, every like hospital they moved like to the FFDM, the fulfilled digital mammograms, and therefore I mean this process of uh, taking it and then scanning it to digitize it is done uh, automatically. So it's the FFDM by itself it generates the the X-ray images as, uh, and sends that I mean to the to the computer straight away. Uh, in here, I have these dates here. Uh, this is the dates that I mentioned before that in 2003, uh, it uh, came to, it was introduced to Europe, the, the FFDM uh, uh, X-ray imaging. And uh, in 2006, it uh, reached to, uh, to the hospitals in uh, Sweden. I'm really not sure about the situation there in Algeria, if they are still like using the, the analog uh, or they have moved, uh, probably like in the big hospitals, they have moved to the FFDM. Uh, the FFDM here, it generates the, uh, the, the X-ray images as a row, for in, a, in a row format that it looks like this, that is not for a presentation here, it's for a processing, as it says here, which means that the radiologist cannot use this one for diagnostic uh, purposes, they will post-process this one to yield something like this so that they can uh, uh, examine it. I mean, the radiologist can examine this. And therefore, I mean, you have the row here for the FFDM. It's called like also for processing. So in the radiologist uh, uh, terms, if you tell them that uh, the, the row image, FFDM image, or you tell them the for processing, both of them, they mean the same thing. If you tell them the processed image, 
or the for process presentation, it means the same thing. Uh, the, the, the issue here is that, I mean, once some of the X-ray images here of in the FFDM device, they generate the raw images and then they are, um, the intensity, it's remapped, I mean, to, to generate this, the processed uh, uh, images. These are discarded. Normally these ones are kept in the hospitals, okay? Um, okay, so here uh, we are talking about the FFDM and um, still, I mean, there was like some uh, researchers working on the fact, I mean, they don't like it that uh, uh, radiologists or researchers are seeing the, the, the breast uh, X-ray here as a two dimensional image because it's an object in real life and therefore it should be perceived as a three dimension. Therefore, I mean, they came up with uh, uh, different solutions for that. One of them is uh, called uh, the Sexa Phantom. And the one who uh, invented this, the Sexa Phantom is uh, John Shepard. And uh, I had the privilege to work with him back uh, at Karolinska Institute when I was there. He was a visiting uh, scholar there at that time. Um, so he uh, used this phantom. Phantom is this plastic uh, device here with different uh, depth. Um, and it will be put together here on the scanner. And uh, this is the brass, for example, and they, they will put it here so that uh, when, when the X-ray X -ray, goes i mean um, to 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 scan then it will scan with it uh, this phantom and therefore they can know the depth of uh, yeah the depth depth or the thickness of the fibroglandular tissue or the breast tissue here based on relationship with uh, with the phantom that they have visualized here therefore they will they can from a 2D image here, they can just they can generate like a three-dimensional representation of that. And uh, this is with the phantom. And uh, there is another initiative. Um, it's called uh, Volpara. It's a commercial software. And uh, this one, it generates basically a 3D density map from a 2D image of the breast, X-ray breast uh, images. And uh, the one who uh, invented is uh, uh, Ralph Hyman. I met him, uh, he came to Karolinska back then to, to, uh, uh, to, to, to promote, to promote his, uh, his company that he, uh, they call it uh, Volpara Health Technologies to sell to, to us, I mean, the, his uh, software to generate this uh, basically, I mean, the 3D uh, map and therefore, I mean, to get the volumetric Person density. We'll talk about them, what I mean by person density later on. Uh, Ralph Hyman, uh, he's the CEO of this company, and uh, his uh, software is based on his PhD thesis at Oxford University. And uh, he based it on uh, the physics properties, I mean, together with the accusation parameters. Um, from from uh, from the X-ray uh, imaging uh, device, so that it he can like render this to this uh, mapping. Okay, and why do they do that? I mean, therefore, I, I mean, they do that. I mean, to make it uh, more precise in calculating the statistics of the breast here. Like for example, this uh, white tissue that you see here. Um, we will talk about it. That's uh, the ratio of this one to the total uh, breast region is called the percent density. We'll talk about that shortly. Um, yeah, so he came to Karolinsk and we were like uh, uh, discussing with him uh, uh, the, his, uh, like the, the software that we can use it for pilot studies and therefore we have like some publications uh, with that. Yeah, okay. 
So now we move to this uh, topic on the breast uh, cancer studies, uh, the, uh, the person density PD and the volumetric person density. So the first thing that it comes to your mind probably is what do I mean by uh, person density? Percent, person density is the ratio of this area, for example, the fibroglandular tissue to the total area of the of the breast that ratio is called the person density and it's found to be uh highly uh, it's a, it's a one of the or it's the the first uh, image based uh, measurement that's linked to the risk of breast cancer so that ratio is always like used in uh, for modeling uh, of course, here the pectoral muscle here is removed, and um, yeah, this is the, the the person density, which is as I mentioned again, it's just like the ratio of this whitish area to the total uh, region of the breast. Okay, and uh, the volumetric uh, person density is basically the same thing. It's like uh, calculating this. Uh, the fibroglandular tissue, but it's not from the 2D image, it's from the 3D density map that uh, this company generates, right? So it, it, it generates that uh, based on, as I mentioned, the acquisition parameters of the, the, of the scanner, and it needs only the raw uh, images. I will take you back. I mean, to what the raw images are. They are these ones. The processed images are these ones. So the Volpara or like the volumetric, the 3D map, that one, it generated from the images that it came straight away from the scanner, from the X ray scanner, without any touch, without any like uh, post processing. Uh, of the intensities as it is they take it and they generate the, the volumetric person density the problem with this software uh, of the ralph hyman is that it works as i mentioned only on the raw images and therefore most of the the data the x-ray uh, images of the breast that are available at hospitals they are the processed uh, versions of that as I mentioned before, that normally it's a routine that they keep the process of the images and they discard or throw away the raw images. Okay, so what we did here in one of the research or the publication that we did is that we used machine learning to, to train uh, the model to learn the patterns from uh, of, the, of the Volpara, of the volumetric PD using the software from the raw images and then we applied them I mean, to the to the process of the images that we have right so we have divided them I mean, the set that we have into trained data set and validation data set and therefore we have like another uh, set for testing so for the trained data set and the validation we both have the raw and the processed images we generate the, the in, in this second approach here, as I mentioned here, we generate um, the volumetric person density using uh, the software that it came from the Volpara Health technology, right? So it gives us like a measurement from the raw images, then we extract like features from the processed images, and together with the accusation parameters, we try to mimic or to learn the, the, the model will learn the pattern of the volumetric person density on the raw image. Okay. And uh, it turns out to be like a valid approach here uh, because we tested it like on the validation, it, uh, it worked well. And then also we, or we worked on like on the test data set where we don't have the raw images, as I mentioned before, that most of the data are kept in the processed uh, form. Um, and these are the guys that I work together with. Um, 
uh, they are uh, well-known um, uh, professionals. Uh, Perhal, Camilla Zen, they are uh, both uh, professors in epidemiology, cancer epidemiology. Uh, John Shepherd is now having his own uh, laboratory at the University of Hawaii in the US. And uh, Keith Humphrey, he's a professor of statistics. And uh, me, myself here, I was the only image analysis uh, there. So the combination of this uh, circle here, or this knowledge through this circle here, it really was very fruitful. And therefore, I mean, this boosting this multidisciplinary research uh, uh, channel. Um, so the, the, the work that I worked on like back then, it was like from 2012 to 2015. So almost like about four years. Uh, we had uh, like um, about 2 million images and uh, there were 750,000 Swedish women recruited. Um, so we have both uh, the, the, the MLO and the CC uh, images of these uh, women. And we have all the information, uh, the HRT, I don't know if this is like a technical term, it's HRT, the hormone uh, replacement therapy. Uh, uh, therapy. Uh, status, we have the, the parity, we have the BMI, we have the age of these women, we have all, even even the, the, the diet, I mean, what uh, the exercise and the diet, all of that kind of information is uh, recorded. Um, in here in Sweden, uh, it's a routine here that uh, each uh, two years, uh, women normally are called from the age of 40 to the age of 74. There is like a screening program here that they are called to the hospital to do a mammography screening each two years. Once I mean they reach to forty years of all of age. Uh, in the in the UK, I think it's uh, they call them for each three years, from fifty until seventy. Um, in Algeria, I don't know. I don't think that there is uh, this kind of program at all there. Um, and normally, uh, there they will appoint like two radiologists to examine uh, this single like X-ray uh, images, uh, images like the MLO and the CCs, both of them. And uh, normally, that the radiologists they come to an agreement. Like, so uh, the, there is like sensitivity here, as I mentioned, between 60 and 80. And on average, their accuracy, this radiology, their accuracy is like about 70% uh, of screen cancer cases are detected like uh, at the screening uh, phase. And which means that 30% uh, uh, of cancer cases are missed, okay? And this one is uh, like after like having like two radiologists because one radiologist you cannot rely on a single radiologist probably because of the fatigue because of other uh, like uh, issues. I mean the measurement cannot be like uh, very precise. So two radi radiologists will be like a much better uh, approach to do. And uh, the work that we had back then at Karolinska was with the goal to develop uh, an analysis like tool, uh, taking genetic data combined with lifestyle, mammographic density, family history factors that could lead to risk-based screening approach. Basically, we want just to develop like a, a statistical model that it can predict uh, uh the women if they have like uh they will have like uh, uh breast cancer in the future or not and that's what we call risk prediction um here i have this kind of two scenarios sketched here um this is normal screening uh so women here uh, and then his scenario based on sweden so each year each two years a woman is called for screening so she's called here for the screening, then 
the second year here, she's called for screening. Then there is so, like, for example, here, like in, in some, uh, like she's, she has developed the cancer and the, the this is termed here interval cancer interval cancer if the cancer is occurs and it's detected at the screening we call that screening uh, detected cancer if it's in between between the two screening uh, uh, calls then it's called the interval cancer and uh, and therefore, I mean, here, I mean, they will detect it, of course, here, because it occurs before that. So the risk prediction scenario here uh, is that women are called like normal here, like from the age of 40 uh, and each two years then for screening. And then we will apply the model here, the second model to categorize the, the, the women here into safe or risky okay if she's like in the uh, here i said risk category no if she's in the safe category then she will continue with a normal uh, path okay diagnostic path here if there is like in the model there is like a trigger here that it tells that oh this woman a woman is uh, prone to how to develop breast cancer in the future then from here we will divert her into another um, an, another uh, program. She will not follow this uh, program. She will you, she will have like more intensified uh, screening and maybe not just X-ray. Maybe it's an MRI. Although MRI is a very expensive tool, uh, maybe that will be like more linked to like ultrasound. Um, or other kind of uh, treatment, okay? And uh, now we go back I mean, to the volumetric percent density, the one that I mentioned before. I have the, the software, I will show you the link to it later on. Uh, I'm sorry, I I'm just looking at the slides. I don't know if there is anything here. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the 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 machines or the X-ray machines that uh, generated the, the the data set, the one that I told you that we have two million images, and um, extract like from like seven hundred fifty thousand women in Swedish uh, in Sweden, and. Most of them, they are coming like, of course, like from, uh, they are all coming from Sweden. Uh, most of them, they are FFDM images and they are coming from uh, from different hospitals here across Sweden. And uh, different hospitals means what? Means that they are using different machines, right? So we end up like having like different machines like the, the GE uh, medical systems, and uh, for example, here the manufacturer is the GE, but it has different models and different station name. Uh, the Sectra, this is the Swedish company that I told you about. I mean, Sectra also, it has different model names, different models of the, of the same, of the scanner, of their scanner. And um, Philips as well. Uh, it doesn't have, it's L30 for all of the models, but for the station name, it has different, different, uh, different station names here. Uh, the problem here, as I will mention later on, is that these companies, they have their own uh, processing algorithm to convert the raw images to the processed images, and they don't put that to public. They are uh, business or like secrets or like, um, yeah, it's like the manufacturer uh, own secret. So they don't show their algorithm that it uh, converts the raw images to the, to the processed image. And this one, it creates a big problem for uh, researchers. Yeah, and then, uh, 
now here, I mean, what we have done is that we used, I mean, the, the percent density and we used the volumetric percent density uh, to, um, to, to test for the association with a genetic uh, genotype here uh, variant called um, uh, RS, the SNP, abbreviated as the SNP. And it's in the gene zinc finger uh, 365 family. Um, this gene is highly associated with uh, the breast cancer and uh, with the percent density as well. So it's about um, uh, 10 to the minus of uh, 10 and uh, 10 to minus uh, 36. This is the p value. I mean, it's very highly associated with uh, with the breast cancer and the person density. This is the the the, the SNP uh, gene, and uh, we have it coded as uh, ca in categorical form, like zero, one, and two. And we try to test, like with a linear regression here for the PD uh, with this gene, and uh, we find that. Um, all of these uh, measurements, this is a Kazam uh, area. So this is a, a percent density. And this is the volumetric percent density that it, it learned from the Volpara. Volpara is the commercial software, as I mentioned, and it works only on the raw images. The volumetric, the Kazam volumetric here works on the processed images by uh, a training on the, the Volpara here, right? And you can see here that uh, they have kind of a similar uh, p-value, even here like uh, with uh, the estimate and, uh, and the 95% uh, confidence interval here, uh, the Volpara and uh, the one that uh, we developed are almost the same, of, they are overlapping. Then we tested uh, the same metrics, the same measurements. The Volpara is the commercial software again, and uh, the PD here, the percent density, the area here, and the volumetric, the volumetric percent density. And we test that of to 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 find out the estimate or like the, the, uh, to estimate the association with with the case uh, control uh, status, which means that to estimate association with the breast cancer, basically. In here, we are not talking about the gene, um, the gene of phenotype, the S SNP, the one that I mentioned before. And uh, it's just like about uh, the association with the breast cancer. And uh, in here, we find, I mean, that, uh, yeah, uh, all of them, I mean, they have that kind of similar perform performance. The, the publication is found here. I put it for reference, although I have a slide at the end for all the publications. And now we'll uh, move um, into the breast cancer studies again, but we'll move to the MIP, which is the mean intensity of the pectoral muscle. So the X-ray images, uh, the X-ray uh, imaging or the mammogram, mammograms, generates this uh, image here. It's of the breast and of the pectoral muscle. It's the muscle here. It appears only on uh, on the MLO uh, images. The CC images, uh, it will not appear. And uh, normally what it's, uh, the, the researchers, what they do, they do the segmentation. So they segment this, the pectoral muscle here and they throw it away. And they just focus on the, the breast because it's breast, basically it's breast cancer, so they focus on the breast. What will take them to the, to the pectoral muscle? And um, everything happens by by accident um, because back then, I mean, we were like just looking at the, the film mammograms. Then we found that um, uh, the, the the film mammograms they differ in their illumination as I mentioned here, even though for with the women having the same uh, percent density, which is the ratio here of the 
the white tissue here, the fibroglandular tissue uh, against, I mean, the, the total region of the breast with the fatty region. Uh, all of them, they have the same percent density, but the, the, the pectoral muscle had these different levels of illumination fluctuation there. And we were kind of puzzled about that. Why does it happen? Uh, we looked at the device itself. I mean, the, the mammogram, um, X-ray uh, images uh, device, and uh, there is uh, a, um, a sensor here under the cassette that uh, it's called the AEC. Uh, stands for the Automatic Exposure Control. And normally they place uh, this sensor underneath. Uh, the breast will be like here, and this one will will uh, compress it. And this sensor here will be sliding here. It will, they will put it underneath the the the, the, the tissue with high uh, yeah with high attenuation, uh, which basically is the the region with fibroglandular fibro tissue. And that one, it will control the, the exposure and it will control the, the contrast, okay? And um, looking at that, um, we start also exploring the, 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 the MIP itself. I mean, the pectoral muscle here, if it has like any kind of... Uh, uh, independent uh, on formation or something that it can help in the for the uh, screening or risk prediction and uh, we gathered there about 1286 cases they are cancer cases and 1400 almost 100 uh, 1400 controls which means that they are healthy women uh, and uh, their age is between 50 and 75 years old and we tried, I mean, to extract them I in the MIP and to work on it, I mean, to see uh, if it has any association with uh, with uh, with uh, the breast uh, cancer risk. And uh, surprisingly, we found that um, it has a strong uh, association. So in here, like it's almost ten negative seven. This is the p-value, and it's uh, very uh, high, indicating very high uh, uh, association. And this is after adjusting for the, the, the model or the regression model, uh, after adjusting it like for the age, BMI, and PD. When I say adjusting for it, like in the regression model, what does it mean? It means that we took the effect or the statistical effect of the age, BMI, and PD, the person density, but the MIP here still has extra information that it can, uh, uh, s supply, I mean, apart from this, right? So we did, I mean, the, 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 uh, the same test like we did before, but now uh, with the association with uh, the case control status, we have like 3,830 uh, uh, images. And this is the number of uh, cases and this is the number of controls, the healthy women. And we test uh, the vol para uh, percent density, the 3D uh, on the raw images, and the area percent density and the MIP, the what mean of the pict mean of the intensity of pectoral muscle. And we checked it, and we found that it's still uh, showing really uh, like very good uh, uh, association with uh, the breast cancer, despite that we took the effect of the percent density, and we took the effect after adjusting here, like for uh, uh, the volumetric percent density and for the, the acquisition parameters as well, along with uh, the HBMI, menopausal status, HRT, and other uh, demographic uh, uh, measurements. Um, like the previous studies, I mean, when we did the uh, test the association with the breast cancer status, we did the same thing and uh, testing uh, the association with the SNP, which is the genetic uh, variant here. 
and uh, we test like if the MIP here will still sh uh, like uh, show uh, some additional information uh, after adjustments. And um, basically here, I mean, what this whole table is telling here is that uh, the mean intensity of pectoral muscle here, it has additional information on the top of uh, uh, the demographic uh, information and on top of the volumetric percent density and the area uh, percent density and everything. So it has like a very distinguished uh, feature. This is the MIP. And um, yeah, and uh, this test, this one and the previous one proved that it has this kind of uh, additional information. Um, now, this is the pectoral muscle here of, uh, of women with the same age of 31. This is, they are four different women and they have the same age, 31, 31, 31, 31. And we extracted the pectoral muscle. This is the thing that uh, normally, like uh, when you do like a breast uh, cancer screening, then uh, they, like I mentioned before, they segment the breast and they throw away the pectoral muscle. And this is the thing that one sh sh in the research should think outside of the box. And not just to follow the flow, I mean, to think uh, independently and uh, follow his own path. So in here, I, we said, I mean, why we like, this is the first thing that it came that why we don't examine the pectoral muscle because we saw that kind of fluctuation in the elimination, right? So looking at it, I mean, we can still, still see that here, like you see this in this film, uh, mammograms, that you have different uh, light, I mean, right? Different brightness for this pectoral muscle here as compared to this, as compared to this and this one here. Although the women here, they are of the same age. So the interpretation why the mean intensity of the pectoral muscle works, we had just two uh, hypotheses. One of them is uh, the aging beyond, beyond the age. So in here, we are talking about the chronic, chronic age versus the biological age. Uh, for example, women of the same age here, if they are really active and they do exercise and so their health or their biological uh, health is much better than the one who is really like just sitting and doing like nothing, no exercise, no. Uh, so you will find like the, this, the brightness here, it, uh, it uh, corresponds to the muscle, right? So the muscle here, if you find it like very bright, that means the muscle uh, is uh, mostly it's a muscle here in the pectoral muscle. When you see it very dim, dim here, like the one, it's not really bright. This one also is not that bright. What does it mean? It means that it's contaminated with fat. What does that mean? That means there is less muscle. What does that mean? That means this woman here, this one, and this one here, they are uh, either like they are obese or like they, yeah, they, they are uh, not active. They are not biologically healthy, okay? Therefore, I divide, I mean, this one into chronic, chronic, chronical uh, age and biological age. They are two different things. And the mean intensity of pectoral muscle probably is, 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 is a factor or is like a met metric that one could extract from this region here to tell if this woman is uh, uh, healthy. I mean, she has like a muscle here, pectoral muscle is uh, preserved as compared to this, that it is contaminated with fat. And therefore, it shows the healthy, the biological health of the women uh, be beyond the age. Okay, and this is the, the first speculation that we had. Then we had another one that we tested. The, then we found it probably it's uh, also it has equivalent uh, um, interpretation as well uh, power that the uh, the pectoral muscle itself. It can act as a proxy or is like an independent, an independent uh, organ 
that uh, regulate the volumetric density. So in the breast here, we calculate the, uh, the percent density. What, what I mean by breast density again, is the, the fibroglandular tissue area divided by the total breast. That's the percent density, and it's highly linked to risk of breast cancer, developing breast cancer. That's just like in two dimension, and the pectoral muscle, when we uh, fuse it with the uh, percent density, it allows it to, to have kind of a 3D volume of that uh, measurement. And to check if it's, uh, this is uh, true or not, we try to look at the accusation parameters. So the guys who are coming like from the medical physics, they probably know what I'm talking about here. The, so the X-ray uh, scanners, all of them, they have uh, uh, in the header file of the, the image, output image, uh, a record of the, the accusation parameters uh, values for, uh, for, for the scanner. And uh, in here, we tested like the, the accusation parameters, all of them, and in here, none of them. And then here, the nine best fitting models with two accusation parameters. And here, we tested two at a time. We test the, the body part thickness and exposure time. And this one is the body part thickness, the relative X-ray exposure. And again, the body part thickness is the one that it's, uh, mainly we thought that it's re uh, relevant to the mean intensity of the pectoral muscle. Okay, because we said that it regulates the volume, but that's mean that it means it uh, it regulates the uh, like the value of the percent density based on the thickness of the of the fibroglandular tissue. So the thickness here is a relevant term, so it's always present here. But we combine it with uh, other uh, X-ray uh, parameters here: the X-ray X-ray exposure, the exposure exposure in um, uh, AS. And the compression force, this uh, how much uh, compression force is applied. Uh, the X-ray tube current, the X-ray uh, exposure. Then we test like only two models with uh, accusation parameters: the body part thickness and the exposure time. So in here, like this is uh, so the all nine acquisition parameters when they are uh, in. Uh, so the residual deviance here is 800, almost like 900. And we want to try to, to see like, uh, like the one that, um, that it can explain this, this deviance, this residual deviance. So what we should look at here in the, in the next experiments here is the one with the least uh, p-value because this one here, like uh, 10 to the minus of 16, it doesn't much explain much of the residual deviance here. But this one, it's somehow the p-value is really uh, removed like from 10 to negative, negative 16 to 0 0.01. So it's almost not significant, which means that uh, this uh, model here is the one that uh, could explain uh, the MIP here and explain most of the accusation parameters. And therefore here we could find that uh, the body part thickness here and the exposure time, they are the one that they are linked to the mean intensity of the pectoral muscle. And uh, when it comes to the, to, to, to the, what we call it here, the, the causal relationship, we can f have this diagram. So the arrows here, they depict the, the, the influence. So genetic variant, they influence the, the true volumetric percent density, and they influence also the breast cancer risk. The true volumetric percent density, it influences the breast cancer risk, and um, it influences also the mean intensity of the pectoral muscle and the measure, measure the uh, percent density. So the percent density and the MIP here, the main intensity of the pectoral muscle, they are both of them influenced by the true volumetric percent uh, density. So it's just like an imaginable value here that of the true volumetric percent, uh, percent density of the fibroglandular tissue, right? 
and uh, this explains uh, this uh, measurement. Now the problem here is that how to combine these two, how to combine the PD and the MIP, because they are two different uh, uh, measurements. And so which, what's the weight for that? You can give like more weight to, to, to one of them. So what we came up with is that we use the normalized form of the percent density here, that the power of, uh, it's like a square root basically. And uh, the MIP here is the power of 4.9. And these values, they are coming from uh, using uh, uh, the box Cox transformation, which basically it does this, uh, like it just it maximizes the log likelihood uh, while minimizing the, the, the standard deviation to get you the lambda here, whereby when you raise it to, I mean, to the top, I mean, to, to the lambda, then you will get a, a normally distributed uh, uh, measurement. So this is basically, I mean, it's just like the box Cox transformation lambda that is generated uh, as along well with this one. The negative 13.7, it's coming from the association with the gene uh, variant, the SNP, the one that I mentioned earlier, the gene uh, variant uh, uh, SNP in the zinc finger uh, family. Uh, we tested like uh, different values and this value, the negative 13.7 is the one that uh, resulted in the highest association with that uh, gene. And the gene is, uh, um, what do you call it? It's um, machine independent. It's just like something in, uh, in the human. So it doesn't have any artifact. So this is the way if you want to combine the MIP measurements with the person density, this is the way how to do it then you will end up with a single measurement. The publications here for your reference. And uh, here I am about like to finish. Uh, I know that I'm taking so much time from you. Um, and this is like, just like another uh, study that uh, it's done with uh, a doctor called Frederick Stand. Uh, he's one of my colleagues uh, back then. And uh, he studied uh, like based, uh, he studied this, uh, based on these two, only two features. One of them is the centricity and the other one is skewness of the intensity gradient. Skewness is like the, when you when you display the histogram, it's either like right skewed or left skewed and that's like the amount of the skewness is measured in that way. And these are the shape descriptors. So he was after describing the shape of the fibroglandular tissue, which is this white areas, and uh, their shape and the organ organization of the of the of this tissue, uh, it, it turns out to be associated with uh, uh, the tumor size. Here are the screen de de detection uh, phase. And uh, the second feature here, which is the centricity, is associated with the tumor size, uh, the breast uh, cancer tumor size, other interval cancer, uh, interval uh, detection phase. Uh, I'm about to finish, as I mentioned here. So this is the, the last part. So it's about the software and then the open uh, access uh, data set. This is the software that I uh, developed call, I call it CASAM. And it stands for Computer Aided Statistical Assessment of Mammograms. It calculates for you the, the percent density and the MIP, the one that I was uh, explaining earlier, and uh, all features I have not enabled yet. Uh, and it also loads the loads the the, uh, the model for that specific uh, uh, machine uh, to calculate the volumetric percent density. So in here, it's like uh, the percent density, and this is the volumetric percent density. And you just you browse the, the the file with all your images, and then it will generate for you the the text file with all the measurements that you need. And this software is uh, I put it like online. You can download it and you can use it if you have uh, the necessary images, the FFDM image. This one it works for the FFDM images, process the FFDM images, and this one it's for uh, the the film uh, based of the analog. Uh, now the data set here, I have uh, this called mini DDSM. Uh, I have like uh, recent publications. 
where I have this, uh, my students here back then, I mean, they worked on estimating the age of women directly from the mammograms because sometimes like when you have like study, like a larger study of uh, uh, breast cancer, you have uh, the information from uh, the women together with the, the, their uh, images, X-ray images. Uh, the, the file of the information contains like the age, BMI, uh, HRT use, uh, the parity, all that kind of information. And if the age, for example, is missing from there, uh, there will be like uh, normally that kind of row or th that woman will be just discarded. Although she has like the X-ray and she has all the information except the age, then they will just put her away. And that one, it will uh, be a loss for the studies because you will end up with less uh, number of samples. Therefore, I mean, uh, some they use, I mean, the average of the age and then they assign it to that woman who doesn't have the age. And that's not really uh, practical and not really feasible and not good to do. A better way is to, to estimate or to use machine learning here to estimate the age of women directly from the mammogram. That will be like a better uh, uh, estimate of the age. And in this paper here, we showed it like with uh, an extensive um, uh, experiment that it's robust and it works well better than the averaging. Uh, the complete mini DDSM, this is, I have it like on Kaggle. It comprises, it has, I think, about 49 gigabyte. Uh, it has uh, uh, film analog uh, images combined with age, uh, score by uh, score, score here is just like categorical uh, representation of the person density. It's a standardized uh, score. And the disease type here, whether it's like benign tumor, uh, benign uh, um, or like cancerous or uh, healthy. And the tumor binary uh, mask. So you, if there is like any tumor, you will have a mask around it. And that's uh, recorded as an, an image. You will have all of this uh, in that data set and you can get it here. Um, and this is now the, the open machine learning challenge. And this is, I think it's, yeah, almost the last, uh, the slides. Uh, please bear up with me because it's like very important, this one here for you. Uh, for the guys who are really working uh, on imaging, uh, this could be like a, a good venue or a, uh, to, to work on. Uh, so one of the challenges is combining images from different manufacturers. So like I mentioned here, the, for the, the GE here, that is like uh, intra-machine variability. And there is like an intermachine variability. Uh, there is like variability all around here. And each manufacturer, this GE, Sectra, or Philips, they have their own algorithm to convert the row to uh, process it. And therefore, I mean, we need like a statistical model here that it can uh, be able, I mean, to combine measurements uh, robustly from all of these uh, machines. Uh, another like uh, uh, challenge here is to like the estimation of the age and BMI, the one that I mentioned in the previous uh, publication. Um, you can find it here. I, I can share with you probably the, the website here. I think you can, yeah, you can see it. Uh, so this is the, the complete mini DDS, DDSM. So, so far, I mean, we have like 159 downloads. Um, the data here, as I mentioned it uh, here, yeah. So in here, I mean, it's accompanied with, uh, with an Excel sheet and uh, you have all these columns like with uh, the view, the side, the status, whether it's like a benign like, or a cancer or a healthy the age of the women, the density corresponding to the present, present density, but that's, that's the biorad basically, and the tumor contour here. Like if you want to study like the characteristics of the tumor, you have the, you have the contour here that you, it will really locate it for you. It will segment it for you. You don't need them to locate it for yourself. It will be used for like for machine learning based uh, uh, models here. Uh, 
the edge distribution, I have it here, the density distribution, and this is the data basically, and it comprises 45 uh, gigabyte. Um, yeah, the challenge, I put it here under the task. If you go to that task here, you will find here, I put it like the challenge automatic edge estimation from mammograms. And I have put um, the paper that I have, and in there we reach it to um, a correlation of about like uh, 62 percent, and uh, the MAE uh, for the age here, which is like the, the error here, it's uh, plus minus eight years old. So that's the the, the error that we have in that range. Um, I'm sure that um, many of you could beat this uh, up and um, with like more uh, sophisticated architecture of machine learning or deep learning. And uh, yeah, I mean, in here, just like a protocol that I de we divide that into 70% for training and 30% for uh, testing. And then you need, I mean, just like you could report on the MAE, uh, which I mean, for the guys who are working in the field, so they know what I am talking about. So the MAE here is the, the metric that we need I mean, to, uh, to, to report here. So far, I mean, you can combine it, I mean, you compare it to the one that we have in the paper, okay? So the paper that I mentioned is the one that I have here, this one. You can download it from the internet if you have access to the I, IEEE later on, or it's ACM, not IEEE, uh, but if you, don't find that, just let me know. I will send it to you. Uh, these are the references. Again, I mean, if you find difficulties to to, to download the, the, the papers, just let me know. I can send you a copy. And this is my final uh, probably yeah, uh, slide. And it shows, I mean, that, uh, I mean, the, 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 the the places or the universities where I have like a previous or ongoing uh, collaboration with, I have like in Algiers, so I have uh, University of Jalfa, Lagwat, uh, Beskra, Umul Bwaki, Tbissa, and uh, Jijin. Uh, finally, this is, uh, yeah, before the thank you, so I have, this is a slide, I know that I'm holding you for too long, but this is really an important topic. Um, the University of Cambridge has recently uh, released its uh, uh, survival uh, study analysis, survival analysis study, and it's of 10 years following um, uh, people, not just women, uh, like following eight types of cancers. It's not just the breast cancer, it's like eight types. It could be like prostate cancer for men. It can be skin uh, cancer. So there are like altogether eight types of cancer. And uh, what the study came up with after like 10 years of uh, survival analysis, they found out, which is not really surprising, but uh, yeah, uh, you have to prove it anyway. So they found out that uh, if like, for example, here in our case here, the breast cancer, if women like uh, are diagnosed like uh, at the early stage, like stage one or stage two, they are likely like um, likely to to more likely like to to survive like in here like we have 81% of them they survive the cancer as compared to the ones here that the their cancer is detected late at the later stage stage 3 or stage the final stage 4 then they, they cannot do that much actually okay so just 26% have survived uh, the the cancer and this will lead us, I mean, to the, this note that the best protection is uh, early detection. This holds true for all types of cancer. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm sorry for taking too long. And yeah, we welcome now the questions if you have any question. Shukran Jazeera, Ustaz Abbas, on this uh, question and answer. We have the تقريبا لدينا ثلاث أسئلة. سؤال الأول هو how big are the raw image dimension and the file size? 
image uh, are using DICOM, I think. Yeah, uh, they are DICOM, but uh, how big the dimensional file size? Uh, if I remember well, I'm not sure if he's talking about the one that I have online or the, the one that we used for our studies, I mean, back then in Karolinska. Anyhow, the one that they are online, you will find like out of 46 gigabyte, they are all film images. Uh, they are stored in PNG format, it's not DICOM, uh, because if it's DICOM or like a other format, it will really increase the size. So to make it available, so I just put it like in a, it's PNG and compressed PNG format. Um, if it's like talking about now a row, it means I, mean, I think he's talking about the previous studies. And if I recall from 2012, yeah, I think for each image, it was like I think between 35, 50 gigabyte, uh, 50 megabyte for each image. Okay, and we have four images, left MLO, right MLO, uh, left CC and right CC for each woman. Uh, this is for the file size, for the dimension, around like 5,000 by 4,000, 6,000, something like that. They vary between, between the manufacturers, the one that I uh, mentioned there. I, I hope I have answered his questions. Yes, thank you. Uh, no the second question is, uh, is there any privacy concerns about using those image in uh, Sweden? Uh, uh, the second part is, are those data considered sensitive information? Of course. Is there, any, yeah, is there any privacy concerns about using those images in Sweden? Uh, now, when you say images, uh, you have to refer me to which study so that I can answer you better. Uh, so now I am just guessing uh, what you really mean here. Probably it's true or not. Um, so probably what you mean here, if you meant, I mean, the one again, the one on the website, they are stripped from the, all the information, the patient information, so there is no information regarding uh, the identity of women, the one that I have on the website. Uh, it has all the information like the, the age and the, uh, the biorad uh, density, and those are not identifiable uh, for women. Okay, so there is no concern there about the privacy. If you are talking about the, the one that we used back then at Karolinska Institute, that's uh, regulated, I mean, by the, the protocol that we had back then. Uh, so the data set was stored internally at our institute. And one, uh, and there is like an administrator there. And when we, once we researchers need like information from the, or the mammogram images, they will send that and they will just remove the uh, name of the person or the, the woman and they replace that with a, an ID then they can match it later on. So from our side, we don't know the women, but uh, we have all that kind of information that we need because women identity, we don't need that to do research. Yes. Uh, the third question is, uh, uh, is mammography the most effective technique for early breast cancer detection? Uh, and how uh, dangerous is uh, repeatedly screening one year, one year interval can cause cancer itself. Has it been uh, quantitatively studied? Uh, because during two years, you said uh, two million uh, five thousand seven uh, seven seven thousand uh, seven hundred fifty thousand women, switch women. Yeah. Yes. Uh, let me break this one down into is to the sub questions. Is mammography the most effective technique for early breast cancer detection? Um, it helps. It's not alone the most effective. I cannot say that, but it helps. It's a really like an important uh, variable in the equation to for risk prediction. 
but loan doesn't make any sense. I mean, you have to combine it with uh, with other factors like the the history uh, of the breast in the family, uh, the HRT use, for example, it has just three categories. Either they uh, are using the uh, the hormone therapy uh, replacement therapy. At the moment, they have used it before, or they never use it. This is like also an important information to have it in the equation. You have the BMI, the age, you know, and the other factors, and all together with mammogram features extracted from mammogram together they, they, they co combine the form uh, a good like model for risk prediction so we cannot say like loan and the mammograms are the most effective technique um, i don't know about the, how dangerous is repeatedly screening uh, in here we have just like in sweden it's like each two years i mean they call the women here for screening and uh, in in UK, as I mentioned, it's three years. Uh, but uh, in here, I mean, the the radiation is. I mean, women are not exposed that much to radiation. Uh, they are not using the tomosynthesis, the one that I mentioned that they take six uh, angle uh, X-ray images. Those that one, I mean, it's not really uh, used uh, in uh, in the hospitals at the moment because it exposes women to radiation. Uh, apart from that, I mean, I don't think that there is like a big problem of radiation exposure here. Yes, uh, I have a question. Uh, you are, you did the 2 million image from 750 700, uh, Swedish women from 40 yeah. to 74. Uh, please, did you uh, do dosimetry study of this? Uh, can a dosimetry study, are you did the dosimetry study of this? Just on a dirasa tahliliya faqat ustad dirtoha. Minnisbal l'amal ta'ku. La dos risti shak 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 examat a mammography. Can certain dos risti par le sa. Ma dirtu shahad il parti ta'ad dosimitri normamu. Just l'al kariti di maj. No, we did something like regarding the relating to the الاكزيشن بارامترز يعني الـ 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 الخصائص اللي جاي خارجه من عند السكانر تاع يعني مثل الاكسبوجر والكي في بي الفولتج هذا الكيلو فايت كيلو فولتج بيك عندنا يعني عندنا المجمد تاعو بصح الدوز الدوز كانت نظن هذاك في ذاك الوقت يعني وان فاريبل نظن مش لي يا ما مش لي فلكتي بزاف حتى نروح نديو عليها يعني تاس ولا اسسمنت وي ديدنت دو ذات امين اون ذا دوز اوكي ثانك يو دكتور عباس ثانك يو سو ماتش الاستاذ امين اسك راك تفضل استاذ امين في الختام اذا شكرا جزيلا استاذ عباس هناك قبل ختام فقط تذكير من طرف اخي امين لك الكلمه استاذ امين السلام عليكم شكرا صح لي نحبس الويب كام تاعي خاطر الانترنت هنا في الوهان شويه شكرا استاذ عبد السلام لهذا الويبينار والمعلومات القيمه وشكرا استاذ عبد الحي لاورجنايزنج فور ذا ديسكوفري مرحبا بكم ان شاء الله الاسئله ربما ما تكونوش بزاف تقنيه ان شاء الله احنا مازال لكن الاستاذ يقدر النهار ان شاء الله على الوقت لدينا شوية مور ديتولز أبوت أبوت الإنتاناليزيس التو تكنيكس التول كيف يشتغلوها بالطبع إذا كان عندها كشف من المعنى وإحنا مرحبا بكم وشكرا جزيلا إحنا إحنا نتضل أن يكون هذا الويبنار يكون مخص مور تكنيكا خرج المحتوى هذا احيانا الناس يكون محتوى الجنرال بيبليك احيانا يكون للمختصين و اظن انقطع البث من طرف امين 
اذا استاذ عباس شكرا جزيلا وان شاء الله فرصه اخرى باذن الله ان شاء الله ان شاء الله بارك الله في الختام اذكر جميع اعضاء ايناس بان العمل ببرنامج يامر انه قد انتهى اذا لذلك اذكرهم بال بالذهاب الى عندي انقطاع في الانترنت سمحوا لي فادعو الاعضاء تاع ايناس اللي راهم دخلوا معنا بزاف اعضاء دخلوا معنا ولكن ما اكتبوش اكونت تاعهم تاع ورك بليس ادعوهم باش يكتبوه وان شاء الله تكون ويبينار اخرين في مجال هذا الاكس باي والايمرجينغ باذن الله وشكرا جزيلا والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته. بارك الله فيك شكرا جزيلا استاذ عباس شكرا الله ان شاء الله الله يحفظك ان شاء الله السلام عليكم السلام السلام الشبكة العالمية للعلماء الجزائريين إناس هي منظمة غير ربحية تأسست عام 2016 من قبل أكاديميين ومهنيين جزائريين مقيمين في الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية الهدف من وراء تأسيسها هو رد الجميل للوطن والمساعدة في رفع مستوى التعليم في الجزائر مهمة إناس هي ربط الكفاءات الجزائرية في جميع أنحاء العالم مع نظرائهم في الجزائر من بين أنشطتها نظمت إناس مؤتمرا مهما عقد خارج العاصمة واشنطن في الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية عام 2019 حدد المشاركون في المؤتمر عدة قطاعات حيوية تحتاجها الجزائر واتفقوا على العمل في عشرة مشاريع تغطي مجالات مختلفة نذكر منها التعليم والرعاية الصحية والزراعة والسياحة البيئية إلى آخره والعمل في هذه المشاريع لا زال قائما تستخدم إناس أكثر المناهج العلمية تطورا من أجل تسيير ومعالجة هذه المشاريع البداية المتواضعة لإناس تضمنت عددا قليلا من الأعضاء وهي اليوم تضم مئات الجزائريين الأكفاء من جميع أنحاء العالم هدفهم هو المشاركة في رد الجميل والمساهمة في بناء جزائرنا الجديدة هذه الثلة من الكفاءات الجزائرية الفخورة بوطنها تجمع بين التنوع والخبرة مع الاستعداد والرغبة في تمهيد الطريق من أجل مستقبل مشرق للجزائر تستخدم إناس منصة تقنية جد متطورة تسمح للأعضاء بالتعاون وتبادل الأفكار والخبرات كمنظمة قائمة إناس لديها أقسام عملية مختلفة تضمن الدعم المحترف لجميع أعضائها ومشاريعها وتظاهراتها العلمية نرحب بكل الكفاءات الجزائرية في العالم للانضمام إلينا في هذه المهمة النبيلة الجزائر أكبر منا جميعا فلننهض ولنترك بصمة